I bet you didn't know, but some of my most popular videos here on YouTube are my thrifting and charity shop haul videos. <laughs> Not the flower arranging stuff. Hello and welcome. I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Star, the online flower arranging classes. Well, I've been collecting a few bits of flower arranging paraphernalia over the last few weeks and months, and I thought you might like to see a thrift haul video, but with a twist, shock horror, woman buys stuff, and then actually uses it. Now, if you enjoy this kind of video, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, and even buy me a coffee. You'll find a link for coffee buying in the notes underneath the video. And better still, why don't you join my membership group here on YouTube? If you click the join button or follow the link under the video, you'll be able to see lots of behind the scene clips, watch my regular Monday videos advert free, and you'll be able to come to my flower arranging classes where we do proper flower arranging. Well, I've already shown you one of the containers that I've been buying on my travels. This is a Silvac vase in the hyacinth pattern, which I bought, I think, for £8 at the monthly, the regular monthly antiques and vintage market, which we have here in town. And at the same time, I bought this Spode Velamore vase, lovely creamy vase with this fluting on the side. I bought the two together, so if that was eight pounds, this must have been four. And with all things coronation happening in recent weeks, I've actually bought myself a coronation mug. Oh, well, it's not a coronation mug. It's a silver Jubilee mug, 1910 to 1935. King George V and Queen Mary. So I thought I might build up a collection of royal memorabilia and try not to treat it too preciously. I'm thinking perhaps next time in the garden with a cup of tea, I might drink it out of my royal mug. So those three items are probably the most expensive items that I'm going to be showing, sharing with you. I have also picked up some free items too. So after the excitement of the coronation weekend, we went down to Deal, which is a seaside town near us. And lo and behold, somebody had put out containers of things which were going free of charge. I wonder whether perhaps it was an Airbnb and they were just refreshing their home goods ready for the summer season. So I have got this sort of flat pebble shaped breadboard. It says linear on the back and I think that is the trade name of House of Fraser. I thought it would make a really good plinth or riser for my flower arrangements and similarly with this board also from linear. Presumably it was originally a charcuterie board. I thought I could have my pot plants on that. It might protect my kitchen windowsill from all the thrills and spills I have from leaking flower arranging vases. Let's get on with the video and I will share with you some simple flower arranging ideas. Now you do not need to be a flower arranger or a florist to adapt some of these ideas. Just use them for inspiration. Now I'm going to be using fresh flowers. That's my preferred flower arranging material of choice. But if you like dried flowers or you have artificial flowers at home, you could replicate these arrangements using what you've already got. So you don't need to spend a fortune. So what else have I been buying? Well, this jug I have had for a while. I bought it from the charity shop three or four years ago, and it turns out it was donated by a friend of mine. I've always loved it, but I don't really like the what looks like to be the homemade or the upcycled painted gloss finish to it. And I often wondered what the original vase looked like. And now I know. I've got a mismatched pair of vases, which I am really pleased with. In the following clip, I'll show you how I'm going to use this vase and actually make use of some long stemmed flowers, which I've got left over from another project. and have just been sitting in a bucket in my workshop. Now, if you're a flower arranger, you may well have a bucket of odds and ends like this. And why not do a more elegant version of a cut and plonk flower arrangement. Although looking at that, it's not too bad, is it? 
but I like to be slightly more purposeful with my arrangements to get them to look like a curated form of what nature would give you. So first of all, I'm looking at my flowers. I've got an odd combination. It's a bit like when you go to the supermarket for a bunch of flowers. I've got one more of the chrysanthemum blooms left. I've got one long head of my sweet william, a few stems of the garlic mustard, and the leftovers of my sea lavender, which is very nearly dried. So what I think I'm going to do is start with my shorter stem. I quite like this vase because it's got this diagonal edge on it and I might nestle my focal flower just so it sits on the edge here a little bit lower. So I'm going to take some of the larger leaves off. They do get a little bit shaggy, although these ones are looking reasonably healthy. So perhaps because I haven't really got any greenery, I might keep half the green on and then peel off the net. Keeping the petals intact. And then have a bit of a measure up. I want my flower low, but I also want to show off some of the, the green leafage as well. So I'm going to cut five centimetres off the end. And I've done that at a diagonal angle so that the flower head can take up as much water as possible. And then as I work my way through my leftovers, deciding what I can keep on the long stems and what I might need to cut off from the sides. Just trimming it up, making sure whatever I do have in my vase is looking the best it possibly can. So here, with this piece of garlic mustard, Got quite long side shoots and I'm wondering whether I can cut that down to get several placements rather than just the single one. And a hidden treasure, the sweet William, one single stem left but it's broken there so I'm going to pinch that out. My sea lavender is quite busy, it's quite bushy. I'm just going to thin it out a little bit so it doesn't look too visually heavy. Quite a weird thing to say when the stems are so lightweight in character. But I just don't want too much frill going on. What do you reckon? It looks, certainly looks better against a plain background so you can actually see what I've been doing. And just to think, those flowers were nearly on their way to the compost heap. I hope that gives you a little bit of confidence when you start to arrange your own flowers. You don't need to be a flower arranger or a florist or a member of a flower club to be able to arrange flowers. It's about you doing and what you want to do in the enjoyment of your own home. But just remember, my top tip, always condition your flowers and cut your flowers to different lengths so they don't look too static and staid in your vase. Now, if you've been following my thrifting adventures for a while, you'll know that I've fallen in love with Chippendale glass and I still haven't really got to the bottom of what is Chippendale glass and what is a reproduction. But at one pound, I couldn't resist this little glass dish. It has got a six-sided base with a little dipped punt at the back, the raised trophy-style handles and the scalloped top too. So I thought it's probably about time I put some of these little vases to use. I've got another one here as well, which I've been using to store my buttons in. Actually, now that gives me a really good idea. Check out the next clip and I'll show you how I'm going to use these vases and I think how I'm going to use my stash of buttons as a mechanic to hold my flowers in place. And as you can see, I've been using this one to store my white buttons and I thought do you reckon those buttons would make quite a good flower frog? Well, let's have a go and see whether it works. Add water. And I've collected some flowers from the garden. It's no mow May, and we've got a couple of patches on our lawn which are letting grow up a little bit, and the wild flowers are starting to appear. So even if you haven't got a garden of flowers, and you haven't got the money or the time to go to the florist or the supermarket. You will always pick some weeds and bring them indoors to enjoy. After all, a weed is only a flower that's in the wrong place. 
and don't these arrangements just look so pretty so here are my daisies arranged in their buttons and it was a bit tricky to do to be honest so I cheated and in this little bowl here I got a pin holder disguised with a layer of buttons on top Now, are you a fan of test tubes? I've been picking these up from a, an antique store and also the local vintage market in town. And I've managed to get hold of three test tubes for a pound. Now the, now, the problem with test tubes is they've got round bottoms, so you can't use them as conventional vases. But I've spotted something in the latest edition of Flora magazine, and I'll show you how I'm going to use these test tubes to make pretty little place card settings if you're planning to have a summer party out in your garden. For my next project, the one with the test tubes, I'm taking inspiration from Flora magazine from summer 2023. You can see here they've created little bud vases using old greetings cards and test tubes. And if you're a subscriber to this magazine, you might have noticed that I've been featured in it. This time last year, there was a request for people to submit photographs showing flower arrangements in their charity shop containers. And I picked up this lidded vegetable bowl in my classic red and white transferware style and used that to create a tall, modern, linear arrangement. For this project, I'm going to use some old greetings cards. Happy birthday, Julie. That was from a few months ago. What I'll do is cut off the back of the card and then use this to create a stand for my test tubes. So fold the two corners together and make a really crisp fold. I'm then going to fold it the other way too. Use my ruler just to create a really great crease. Choose a test tube. Measure how wide the test tube is. So that looks like it's 1.5 centimetres, 15 millimetres wide. Mark out 15 millimetres from the edge of the fold. And to create the little stand, you want to have four little cuts to create the bands to hold your flowers. So if you want to do this precisely, you could measure up. So my card's about 12 centimetres long. So if I go with a one centimetre band there, so I've gone two centimetres down, marked out a centimetre, and then perhaps do the same from the bottom, two centimetres up, and then a one centimetre wide. So cutting up to the long line, so each of my cuts is the same length, just makes it neater that way. Turn the card round. And I'm going to flick these bits up. you see how they're starting to pop out from the card? And then I can slide my test tube in. So every time you do this, you need to measure your test tube because they do vary in size. And that creates a lovely little stand, like a showcase, a single bloom from the garden. Or wouldn't they make good place settings if you were having family over in the summer? You could write the name on the side and they've got a little keepsake to take home. Do you remember this jug? It was the one I used for my red, white and blue garden flowers, which I had on my coronation tea table. This actually cost me, I think it was a pound from the charity shop, and it's a 1990, and it's a 1977 souvenir from the Queen's Jubilee. You've seen me use this, but you haven't seen me use the matching sugar bowl. So watch the next clip, and I'll show you how I'm going to use my sugar bowl. Now what can I do with this sugar bowl other than using it for sugar, which we hardly ever seem to use these days. And here inside I've got another thrifted or vintage pin holder. This was gifted to me by my neighbour or possibly one of the ladies from Flower Club, I can't quite remember. But if you'd like to have a little look around my collection of pin holders, I do have a video on that and I'll make sure I'll leave a link to it in the notes underneath this one. 
and how I like to fix my I like to fix my pin holders in place using museum wax. I've used this a little bit before. It comes in a great big tub like this. I'll leave a link to that in the notes underneath the video if you're interested in buying some for yourself. What you need to do is just warm up the wax in your hand and then I like to divide into three pieces. Oops. Roll it into a little bit of a sausage shape and attach it at three pieces around the edge of my flower frog. Just like that. That's probably overkill in the amount that you need. And then put it into your flat bottom container, pushing it down and give it a squeeze to hold in place. So you may find that the fit or fix isn't instant. And if it, that's the case for you, you just need to let the wax harden off for a little while. I'll then fill this with water. And I think inspired by the small container and by my Julie and Julia project I'm doing at the moment, have you heard about that? It's where I'm making all 86 of Julia Clement's arrangements in her book called Fun With Flowers, which she wrote in the 1950s. She makes most of her arrangements using either a pin holder or chicken wire. So inspired by her and the fact that I've got some tall flowers left over from other projects, I think I'd make use of it. Now, to be honest, I have had these chrysanthemum blooms probably for about three weeks. They came with my regular Freddy's Flowers deliveries. So if you live in Great Britain and you fancy subscribing to Freddy's Flowers, I do have a discount code for you. So I'll make sure I leave a link to that in the notes underneath the video. And what you'll see is these chrysanthemums, they come packed in, they come packed in the box in these little nets and that's to protect the flower head. And what you usually do is take the nets off as soon as you put your flowers in water and I've just kept the nets on. And looking at these flowers, I can see that I've got a little bit of an accident here. And as I look at the net here, I can see that the flower has actually died before I've been able to make use of it. But luckily, I have another one to hand. So I will show you up close how satisfying it is taking the net off, but can you see the flowers started to go over? But you very carefully peel it back. Don't be tempted to just pull it off. You carefully have to peel the net back and that will release the petals. And over the course of a few minutes, the whole flower head will relax and open out. Look, if I keep that bit there out of sight, I could kid you that the flower hadn't died. So once again, I'm going to take my jug of water and put my water into my container. And then the trick with using a pin holder is to cut your flowers square, flat. Normally, when you hear me talking about flower arranging and conditioning your flowers, I'm always encouraging you to cut your flowers at an angle, but it's much easier to arrange your flowers on a pin holder when you've got the whole width of the stem to play with, rather than trying to balance a tapered edge of your diagonally cut flower stem onto the pins. So, shall we try and be a little bit adventurous with this? I've got quite a tall flower, I'm going to take off the leaves because they're not particularly attractive. They get very sort of shaggy and old looking very quickly. And I can hold that up to my container and I could go quite high. The higher you go though, the more unstable your arrangement will become. And if you particularly want this flower arrangement to be in your living room, for instance, I'd be tempted to make it on the kitchen table and then immediately take it to your living room wherever you want it to spread and add the water in afterwards. Otherwise, you've got the problem of trying to carry a bowl full of water through your house and you may want to uh, avoid the thrills and spills of doing that. I'm going to be adventurous and cut quite a bit off my flower heads here. So I'm going to put that onto the pin holder and then peel back the net so I can appreciate the flower head in all its glory. In fact, I should have done that from the other end and I've got to lift it back over the head. So at the moment, it just looks like a golf ball sitting at the top of a stem, a bit like a lollipop, but it will open out 
And then once I've got that flower in, I'm going to come down a little bit further and cut my flower, next flower a little bit shorter. Cut long to begin with, and then you can get shorter as you go. I want to make sure there's a little bit of a gap between the flowers so it doesn't look just like one pink column. You'll actually be able to see the three individual stems. So I'm going to peel off the net from the bottom. And it's slowly opening up. Setting that just to one side of that first flower head. And then I've saved what appears to be my biggest flowers to last. Normally in flower arranging, we have the bigger flowers at the bottom and as you go to the top of the arrangement or out to the side, the flower head size gets smaller. So you need to think about a full bloom in the center and then buds to the outside edges. So I've cut that one really short. Take off the netting. and the flower is opening up already. So a fabulous way of showcasing my rather stunning chrysanthemum blooms. And if you wanted to, you could add in more flowers, but you don't have to. I might see at the end of the video whether I got more flowers to spare, and then I'll fill it out a little bit. I can't resist a bit of green glass. I fell in love with this depression glass as a young girl when we used to go and visit my grandmother up in Lancashire and she had a dressing table set, a tray with a little pot for her trinkets and I think there may have been a candlestick included too. So I've picked up this little trough and I'm going to use this using actually some specialist floristry wire. And if you're a flower ranger, you might have lots of this in your stash, particularly if you've used it and tried to straighten it out again, as you can see, I've got here. So watch the next clip and I'll show you how I'm going to use or recycle my aluminium wire and use that as a mechanic to hold my flowers in place. And if you're interested in sourcing a brand new reel of your own aluminium wire, I'll leave a link to that in the description underneath this video. I've got this little pretty trough vase here in glass. It's got tiny little feet. It's not very deep and not very long. And I'm going to put my very short stem flowers in here. But if I put them in in the cut and plonk style, they're just going to fall all over the place. So I need to create a mechanic to hold my flowers in place. And this is where my specialist aluminium wire comes in. You can buy this online in all sorts of colours. I think it comes in about a 10 metre roll and it's two millimetre wire. So if you are going to buy some, just make sure it isn't the fine wire. This is something quite different. And what's lovely about it is that you can manipulate it into any shape you like. So you can see here, I've used this before and I've tried to straighten it out. It never does quite straighten out. So I'm going to unravel this and then using a wooden spoon, create coils of wire I'm going to line up inside the container. I need to have one short section and one long section. So with my wooden spoon, going around the edge, making loose coils. It may be if you had a glue stick, you could use that. Or if you wanted to have really big coils, perhaps a can of aerospel spray or polish would do the trick too. So don't wrap too tightly, otherwise you'll never get the wire off your wooden spoon. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top and then I can play around with the wire and adjust it to fit my container. Wiggle it out. Just going to tuck in those cut ends so it doesn't scratch my container or me. And adjust to fit. And then the magic ingredient, a little bit of water. This arrangement will be really good for using the really short stems. So whereas I've previously used my offcuts of Sweet William as longer lengths, I'm going to cut down the individual florets. Perhaps even shorter than that. work 
work my way up and down the line, creating a little sort of tapestry effect almost. This is such a lovely way to use up all these offcuts. And you might have thought about just throwing your flower arrangement away, but there's always a few little pieces that you can enjoy for another time. So even here, where the sweet williams have gone over, if I just pull out the dead flowers, it gives me this lovely, tufty, textural form that I can include into the arrangement. So what do you reckon? Another pretty container, but made more beautiful by actually being put into use. Now check this out. I could not resist this little bowl. Do you know what it is? What attracted me was this peculiar little detail on the top of the lid. A very fancy looking handle, you might think. But when you open up at the top, it's a pair of sugar tongs. Now, we regularly have family Saturday night in front of the telly and there's always a little chocolate treat involved. And I thought perhaps next time we have our chocolate treat, I might tumble them into the bowl and then perhaps we can eat them in a more sophisticated way by serving them out one at a time. And of course, I've got myself there a little rose bowl. So watch the next clip and I'll show you how I'm going to arrange some short stemmed roses in this container so I can enjoy it as a flower vase and then as a little container for our sweet treats on a Saturday night. Isn't this sugar bowl just absolutely fabulous? Of course it will need a really good washout before I put any food products inside but for now I'm going to use these leftover ute roses. These roses I bought a week ago and I use them at my flower club and they've lasted really well because they're on really short stems so the water hasn't got very far to travel to get to the flower head. Add my water. And then my plan is to layer in the flowers. So at the moment, I'm just trying to decide how short to cut them. Now the problem with short flowers, can you see what's happening here? The comparative weight of the flower head is making the flowers tumble out of my container. But hopefully when I've got lots of flowers in, they should help to support each other and stay upright in my container. Strange that, isn't it? It wants to cartwheel out of the way. And as it does, it's hitting the side of the container and there isn't any water that high up. So I have to make sure I do a little check at eye level to make sure that all the stems are in water before I put the arrangement in my living room. Perhaps I just need to turn the flower head round. That seems to have worked okay. You see there's quite a variation in size of the flower heads. Almost looks as if they're garden roses rather than being of uniform size and shape. The more stems I put in, the tighter they lock together. So They're all locking quite firmly into place, giving me a classic rose arrangement. But if you want to do an all rain rose arrangement, it looks fabulous and luxurious. But did you see how small my container was to begin with? So if you're going to use a bigger rose bowl, you will need loads and loads of flowers. So the first thing you'll need to do with any flower arrangement is to make sure your vase is clean. So wash it out. I tend to wash them out when I've finished using my vase. So when these flowers have died, I'll give my vase a really good scrub out so it's ready to go for next time and then fill it with water. I'm going to release my flowers. I'm going to cut away the string and then see what is still living and I can add into my container. I'm just imagining a little haze of flowers over the top. So what I'll do is to measure my flowers. I'm just going to do a cut and plonk all the way along, keeping my flowers, oops, aim for the vase, Julie, the same length. And 
And there we have a little pretty arrangement. A cut and plonk and a great alternative for using your short stem flowers. Normally I put mine in a jam jar on my kitchen window, but today I'm going to have a slightly more upmarket look. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. And if you like going to the charity shop too, you ought to head over to my free Facebook group, which is called Flower Start World. You'll find a link to it in the notes underneath this video. And better still, I would love it if you joined my new YouTube membership channel. That's the place where I'm going to be hosting my monthly flower club classes. So which arrangement did you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Was it this tiny little piece here? arranged in my spode. Another tiny arrangement arranged in my gla green glass trough. Can you see the little spirals of aluminium wire? So handy for using those tiny bits of flour which would otherwise gone straight into the compost bin. And then we had my sugar bowl arrangement arranged on the pin holder. I'm not entirely convinced that this flower head is going to come out but can you see how it's keeping everything in scale and proportion with my largest bloom at the bottom and the smallest at the top? And yes, I did infill the line a little bit with some of my sea lavender and stems of wild garlic, which are growing in our garden. Actually, they're not wild garlic. They're growing wild in the garden. It's garlic mustard that's growing wild in the garden. It just seems to have arrived this year and using exactly the same flowers, but last time on the pin holder, and this time massed together in my jug, a lovely, beautiful, country style looking flower arrangements. I'm taking great care lifting these tiny arrangements up in my Chippendale glass, using my buttons as my mechanic. And look, yes, they're weeds, daisies and buttercups in the garden. But because I've cut them and put them into some sparkling clean glassware, set them on a wooden plinth, it really does make the very ordinary look rather special. And perhaps you preferred the classic rose bowl arrangements. These roses were from the supermarket, cut short originally to reuse in another arrangement. They're now a week old and are certainly going to give me a few more days pleasure. And last but not least, my little bud vase. I do like it when flower arranging and crafting collide. So this is a stem of the native geranium out of my garden. Quite an insignificant flower, but again making it look really special when it's showcased on its own. I didn't end up using my Silvac vase, so I'll feature that in another video another time. And my Jubilee mug, I think it's probably time for a cup of tea and I shall sit outside in the garden after I've tidied up and enjoy a little bit of time in the sunshine. That's all for me for now and I'll see you again next time. Me again, I forgot to show you this. I bought an ash tray from the charity shop, really, really heavy weight in cut glass. You can barely see the ridges where the cigarettes would have rested. But along with the other chrysanthemum blooms I showed you, I had one that is fully healthy and open, but it popped off its flower stem. Now normally I would have put this straight into the compost bin and been a little bit cross with myself because I've been heavy handed, but I think nestled in that ashtray, it looks really beautiful. So I'm going to have this low down on my coffee table so I can look down into it and enjoy it for a few more days to come. That really is all for me for now and I'll see you again next time.